a miscarriage of justice. As I've said many times in this place, it is and should be the top priority of this House to put the protection of all Canadians ahead of any political gain. And this mantra seems to have fallen on deaf Liberal ears. Leaders are to be guided by vision and principles, taking ownership of their problems. We saw no such leadership, no principles and no ownership on this issue by the current government. Canadians are taking note, Mr. Speaker, in their confidence in this government to establish and maintain justice, among many other things, continues to diminish. Canadians need confidence in our justice system, confidence that victims are protected, that criminals come to justice, and that communities are safe. For 35 years, I worked alongside brave men and women in policing and many others in the justice system who lived the leadership, who lived the principles and the ownership of our system. We sought justice for victims and the community at large. Sadly, I saw many victims who deserved far better than what the justice system offered at the time. It was therefore exciting to participate as Canada's justice system slowly began to understand and embrace the once forgotten victims of crime, to finally stand up for the full principles of justice. I and thousands of Canadians like me served or are serving our communities because we believe Canada needs a justice system that is not just focused on the offender to ensure they receive justice, but also on victims. We believe in a system of justice that is fair, reasonable, and impartially serves all Canadians. However, Mr. Speaker, that is not what has happened in this case. Last week, not a single member of the Liberal Government Caucus stood up for justice, stood up for victims, or had the courage to show leadership. It has shaken the faith of all Canadians in our justice system. A child murderer being placed in what is really a minimum security correctional facility, a healing lodge, that increases the potential of putting others at risk yet again, and for no reason. This type of facility is designed to assist offenders reintegrate back into their communities near the end of their term of incarceration, not when they have nearly 17 years left to serve before even being eligible for parole. And not a single Liberal, from the Prime Minister through Cabinet to the backbench, stood up to demand action. I do applaud my Conservative, my new Conservative colleague, the member from Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill, for having the courage to no longer tolerate this Liberal's lack of leadership on the tough issues and their inability to properly govern and stand with us in the opposition. I'm not here to exploit the tragedy that befell the Stratford family. That would be an insult to their suffering. But let's be clear, they are suffering, needlessly re-victimized by this decision. I will not dwell on the details of her death, but those details are seared in our collective memory like a scar that will not heal. And that's the way it should be. As a society, no matter our party ideologies, we can all agree that our children innocent, vulnerable, and trusting are to be cherished and protected. Surely, no matter how and what your political loyalty lies, you cannot believe that a killer of a child should be placed in a minimum security prison to walk among non-violent offenders living with their children. There is no justice in such a decision. This is, by any measure, an outrage. This is, by any measure, gross negligence and again, by any measure, a miscarriage of justice. Mr. Speaker, I stand before you as someone who gave years defending and upholding justice and demand the government act today to re restore my faith and that of all Canadians. Their announced response, unbelievably weak as it is, amounts to ignoring communities, victims, and the family impacted. But let's be clear. The minister has the ability to act just as past governments, Liberal and Conservative governments, have acted when the system has failed. A current Liberal Cabinet Minister acted when a cop killer was transferred to Club Fed, a minimum security prison in B.C. And guess what? Correctional Services Canada reversed that decision, at his, as the Liberal Cabinet Minister directed them to. Conservative ministers also acted when Correctional Services uh, Canada made decisions that failed Canadians. 
and negatively impacted public confidence, and those decisions were reversed. So this case should also receive an immediate similar response. But this Trudeau government is less concerned with upholding justice and seems more concerned about the feelings of unrepentant and manipulative killers. I'm not interested in pre-written responses from the political aides behind the curtains. I don't want anyone hiding behind bureaucratic reasoning. There are higher order laws, laws upon which this country was founded, being violated by this government. Someone at the highest level must stand up and take responsibility for this egregious situation. <coughs> Admittedly, I'm a former police officer, not a powerful orator, but today, today I wish my gift were standing up and speaking so that others would listen. We need to come together and reverse the, the out of trauma revisited upon a family who's been through far too much already. We can't bring young Tory back. And we can't erase her final hours. If we could, everyone in this house would do just that. So let's stop the games. Let's restore what justice we can do for Tory's family. Any moral person in this house could agree that with that, and as it is, it's cold comfort, Mr. Speaker. Surely we can all agree that having their wound reopened is equivalent to unnecessary anguish and suffering. Surely we can get this fixed before Mr. Stafford has to come to Parliament Hill and demand it. No victim or their family should ever have to protest to see justice served. But that is what the Liberal government and their spineless leader are asking. Surely, we can all agree that a family that has lost everything need not lose their faith that there will be justice for their daughter's killer. Canadians must be protected and the most evil among us from the most evil among us. And as Canadians, we deserve nothing less. Consider for a moment the women and their children living in this healing lodge. And now, this Liberal government is traumatizing these women all over again by putting a child killer in their midst. Will the hypocrisy never end, Mr. Speaker? Stop and think about the situation and tell me who wins here? Who is benefiting from this very offensive situation? The only person I can think of that's winning is Tara Lynn McClintock. And at whose expense is she benefiting? At the expense of Tory Stafford's family? At the expense of the entire community of Stratford, Ontario? At the expense, quite frankly, of every Canadian who believes and expects, as I do, that justice in this country will be served. Surely, Mr. Speaker, that is far too high a price to pay. Thank you very much. Questions and comments? Question uh, commentaire. The Honourable Member for uh, Peace River uh, Westlock. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'd like to thank my honourable colleague for his, the great speech that he uh, that he gave. And I know that uh, he has had uh, in-depth life experience with our justice system, um, and he brings that wealth of knowledge to this place. And I'd like to thank him for his service. Uh, I do believe he was a police officer for 25 years, maybe even longer, and uh, served the community of uh, Medicine Hat very well there as well. And, Mr. Speaker, we're here today discussing the particular case and uh, the particular movement of a prisoner from uh, a medium security facility with barbed wire and, and, and bars and gates and things like that to a place that doesn't have those things. And so uh, I know that the member mentioned it uh, extensively. I'm just wondering what has been the reaction in his writing and has he received any correspondence on this? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Medicine Hat, Cardston Warner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to my colleague for the question. I think it's uh, important for the public to appreciate that although uh, the government has played with words on the use of minimum security because the healing lodge, or, or medium security, because the healing lodge is classified as a medium minimum security facility, but it is not a medium security facility in its truest sense, as was mentioned. Uh, you won't find the, uh, the ability for for inmates to interact in, the, uh, in a regular prison like they do in the healing lodge. You'll find that their movements are restricted in a medium security prison because they aren't, um, they're, they're not safe to be in the general public. And so 
Um, the reaction in my community has been loud and it's been consistent, and that is disbelief, uh, frustration, uh, disappointment in a system that they trust, and uh, they believe that as government there should be little in the way of uh, foot dragging on this issue, and, and it's easy to resolve, and that can be resolved quite simply by a decision of the Prime Minister, a decision of the Minister of Public Safety, to uh, direct uh, Correctional Services Canada to reverse its decision and remove move Ms. McClintock back to the medium security prison she had, where, where she was, uh, and where she needs to be. And so. Um, uh, my, my constituents have been very consistent on this, and uh, uh, I've received information from other Canadians as well who believe the same thing. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Avalon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member opposite for his speech today. And uh, I think we can all agree that a lot of what's been said, we understand the reason it's been said. But in an answer just now, he said that a, a healing lodge is not a medium security facility by its nature. So is he now abdicating as well that we change the healing lodge designation from medium to minimum security and anyone that's there considered medium now be put back into the regular so-called gates, razor wire, uh, chains, whatever? Is that what he's abdicating for as well when it comes to the healing lodges? Because they were supported by the former government. The, the program was expanded by the former government as a healing lodge being designated a medium security facility. Well, member for Medicine Hat, Cardston Warner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to my friend for the question. Uh, what I'd like to see is uh, healing lodges used in the manner in which they were designed to be used for, and that is to allow for a reintegration of offenders who are nearing the completion of their term of incarceration to have that transition back to community eased in, to allow them to integrate in a way that will allow them to be successful. Uh, not for the healing lodges were never designed for, for, for prisoners who are a risk to community, who have spent uh, less than half of their time before eligible for parole uh, in these facilities. And there are there are minimum security prisons who uh, are facilities that have, that have a multitude of different prisoners in, in, their, uh, in their walls that don't pose a threat to public safety other than to uh, finish their sentence, their debt to society for the crime they committed. In this case, um, this individual has not demonstrated and there's no evidence to suggest that she is ready uh, to serve in this capacity. She's still got 17 plus years before she's even eligible for parole, and why would we want to even place her in a, in a facility where, where reintegration isn't even an option for that many years? Reprise de débat, l'enlève député de Montarville. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, avant de débuter, j'aimerais vous informer que je vais partager mon temps avec le député de scarborough gilwood Monsieur le Président, je prends la parole aujourd'hui dans un dossier concernant le transfert d'un délinquant d'un établissement à un autre au sein du service correctionnel du Canada. Le dossier en question et le transfert de la délinquante en cause ont soulevé l'indignation de nombreux Canadiens, des médias et surtout de la famille de la victime qui se sont montrés sceptiques face à cette nouvelle. Notre gouvernement a entendu ces critiques et est sensible aux préoccupations soulevées par les personnes touchées, spécialement la famille de la victime. Monsieur le Président, c'est pourquoi le ministre de la Sécurité publique a demandé la semaine dernière à la commissaire du service correctionnel du Canada